Yes, hi, Carlos, Jim Delapon here. I wanted to give you some video feedback here and some assistance with this because I know you're new to this. So uh, let's start out with, and I appreciate this extra effort. So let's start out with what you have here, and I'm going to give you some tips on what to do with this. So let me download this image here, uh, which I can see is, uh, well, it's not an Illustrator file, but I'm downloading it in Illustrator. So what this is, is an image. It's not a, uh, a vector artwork. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So you see when I zoom in, see how pixelated it is and stair-stepped? That is not an indication of a vector image. Vector images are smooth no matter how much you scale them up. And if I go into outline mode, go into view outline, it disappears. Okay? So let me hit Control y to come back into uh, preview. And let's work with this, and I'll show you how you can create this. Let me hit Control zero move this to the side, and go in here, okay? So let's start out with, with the text, all right? So I showed you how to arc the text. I don't know, well, let me just, well, let me just do this, okay? So let me just create a, an ellipse. Um, actually, I'll, I'll create a perfect circle here by clicking and dragging and holding down the Shift key, okay? And then letting go of my cursor first. So I have a perfect circle that is actually filled with white, but it doesn't really matter. You can fill it with anything because what we're going to do is put text on it. So if I go to my text tool and hold my cursor down, I'm going to select the type, type and a path tool. Okay. So I will type, uh, you have this funky little icon here. Just click somewhere on the circle at the top and you'll get that. Okay. And then that means you can instantly start typing. So I want this all to be, uh, uppercase okay so I'm hitting my caps lock key and tapping in pause space and I'm gonna put in an an ampersand instead of the word and all right I, I like that better it says the same thing and it's okay to use and it's more graphic so and then the last clause and then that okay so so we have that now what we need to do is uh, I want to scale this up and I want to move this around and so on and so forth. So here's how you do that. So you would first double click, actually triple click on it to select all the characters. And then once that's done, hit control T to go to the character panel or you can go into window character. Um, uh, I'm sorry, window. Where, where did that? I forget what they do that. I just know shortcuts, but it's all on the side panel here. All right. And over here, it shows you the text and the size. So let's change the font to, um, well, you know what? You could, you could simply type in, if you know it, the first three characters. So I'll just type in CAL for Calibri. Okay. And I'm going to select bold. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is scale this up. So I'll, I'll click here and I'll, I'll, you know, you can, you can kind of preview it here. Um, and you can also, let's see, um, can you scrub it here? No, it doesn't allow you to scrub it. Interesting. All right. So I'll just make this really large. All right. And then what we want to do is rotate this around this path. So you go to the direct selection tool. So this part is tricky. Okay, so with the direct selection tool active, you go to look for an icon. You know, once you hover over this, it's usually this line here, and click and drag. There you go. That actually was easy for me. All right, so I can rotate it around. Notice if you wiggle around your cursor, it jumps to be upside down and that kind of thing. So it's a little sensitive. So let me just uh, all right, come back here. So I'll go to the top here. I'm going to center that ampersand. And then what I might want to do is is actually uh, double click on the ampersand and make that larger. You know, I can I can just just for interest. I'll just do that for now anyway. All right, so let me just uh, come back down a little bit. Let's see how tricky it gets here. It's actually a pain in the neck. Why is this being so, for crying out loud, let me undo that, there we go, whoops, yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you're going to experience this, all right, 
uh, I mean, I actually don't do this too much, but uh, you basically have to wiggle until you kind of get it. All right, so <laughs> we got it there. All right, so uh, let me click away to deselect, and now you have like a little house roof here with, uh, it's hard to tell what this is, see, because it's so small, but it looks like an asterisk here and here, and this looks like a heart. And this is a roof so for a clinic so that's a good graphic it's nice and simple so let's do that all right so let's let's go in and um yeah i don't like how that's looking there but let's so let me fix this text first first of all this switch space in there and um let me highlight this and go to well let's see here um, tracking, tracking puts, um, space in between characters. Okay. So let me, I'll, I'll do it with pause. All right. So now we can kind of even this out. It's not working. It's not evening out like I wanted it to. Okay. And that's because I put that space in there. So let me go back here, do this, add that space, and then you know, I don't want that much space here. Let me just here we go. Okay. All right, that's better. Actually, it's still not what I want. Yeah, because I fooled around with the ampersand, it's throwing things off, and because there's there's five characters here, four characters there, so I'm going to have to find a happy medium, but let me just move forward with creating your roof here for your house. So uh, one little trick on how to do that would be to go to the rectangle tool, click and drag, and as you're dragging, hold down the shift key. That locks it into a, um, a square, perfect square. And then I'll let go with my cursor first, okay? Then let go with my shift key. Then what I'll do is I will rotate this. So once you hold your cursor uh, along the edge here, you're going to click and drag and spin this a little bit. And then once you're up in this area here, you're going to hold down the shift key to lock it in to a 45 degree spin. And then let go with the cursor first. And then let go with the shift key. All right. Then we're going to swap the fill for the stroke. So I'll click on here. So now I have a black stroke with the white fill, or no fill actually, I will increase the size or the width of the thickness of the stroke by clicking on the stroke. And up here, I will just simply click on the numbers here and and until I get something I like. So I want something that's kind of like the same kind of weight feeling as the text. So eight points looks fine to me. And now I'll click on the direct selection tool. So notice there's four anchor points that make up the shape. I will click and drag across this bottom anchor point here. So now note that only that's selected. The rest are hollow. So that means this is selected. So now I'm going to hit my backspace key or delete key. All right. So now we have a roof. All right. So I'll move this up to position. Um, all right. And that, uh, let me see this text here. Uh, I'm going to rotate this actually physically rotate it. Yeah, I don't like how and is, uh, you know, uh, we're creating something symmetrical, so the and is now out of place, uh, with the ampersand is now out of place, so I have, may have to make allowances there. So, but we have a house. So now, I like the idea of the heart, okay? So what I'm doing is I'm going to uh, show you another little trick here if you go to um, Google, all right, and type in heart icons, and then go to images, all right? So this way you don't have to deal with drawing it, okay? This is a simple way of getting something and creating a vector image out of it. Um, so let's select this heart here. So I'm going to click on that, all right? And then I'm going to right-click this and copy the image, okay? I'm then going to go back to Illustrator and paste it, control V, pastes it, okay? 
So again, this is now a vector image. It's not, it's not a vector image, I should say. So if I hit Control Y, you see nothing there. We need to make this a vector image. So here's what we do. Uh, let me move this up here. Here's what we do. We go to Object, Image Trace, Make and Expand. Okay? There. Now, it is now a vector image. So now if I hit Control Y, way What's going on here uh, there we go yeah my I, I locked up for a second there I see that okay so now this is actually I'm just hitting control Y to go uh, toggle back and forth between outline and preview so what we want to do now is this is a grouping of, of shapes okay so we want to go to object ungroup, click away, and then we can select the individual shapes that make up the outer area. So if I click Control Y, I can see that, and I'll hit delete, and select the top part, and hit delete for that. So now I have a perfect heart, all right? And it's vector. So I'll drag here, and uh, I will uh, scale this up, uh, or down, I should say, holding down the shift key, because that constrains it. And the, and the shift and alt key will scale into the center. All right, just so you know. All right, so we'll take that, put that up here. All right, and then we'll create, I, I think that's a cross, a uh, cross or an asterisk, but if it's a cross and you want a cross there, I'll just create a simple rectangle. Copy, paste, copy and paste. It. So it pastes it back on here, all right. I will rotate this, right? Once I get to here, I'm going to hold down the shift, then let go of my mouse first, all right? Then I'll visually center this here, something like that, all right? And then I want it shift, I want it aligned perfectly mathematically left to right. So if I select both, go to my align panel, all right? Actually, let me let me do. Perfect, perfectly, you know, purposefully off center. All right, so we have that. I want to align this. So I'm going to select both. And now in the align panel, if I click this, you can kind of see what's going to happen from this icon. So I click that. Now look at the across. Bam. It's perfectly mathematically centered. Okay. Of course, you want it up a little bit, so you can do that by eye. So I'll select this. And I'm going to group this. Object group. All right, so now it's one unit. I'll place this here. All right, all right. So we get we have all this stuff here. So um, you know, I mean, you can now fill this with a with uh, you know what a, a red, make it a red heart if you want. You know, whatever you like to do. Oops, why? Oh, I'm in grayscale. Let me just. Uh, uh, oops. Document color mode. RGB, what the heck is going on here? Um, um, let's see, so it will be a color, so I'll go to the color panel, uh, window, color, uh, drop down menu, see this is grayscale now, so what we want is uh, CMYK or RGB, so we'll select RGB, so now we have color, okay? So um, you can change your color in that way. Um, so for text, all right, the bottom text. So let's type out, uh, let me go to the type tool, still caps, okay, whoa, I wasn't even looking at <laughs> what I was doing. So, okay, so let's go to the character panel here and we certainly don't want that we want uh, um, first of all let's go here and we want this on two lines of text all right and we want this to be centered and we want the tracking to not be what it is. So over here, see the character panel, let me drag this out. 
uh, let's go to zero. All right. So Calibri bold. All right. So we can choose another font too. All right. But I just want to show you what you can do with this now. So let's drag holistic here. Let's make this bigger. I will simply scale this up in that this manner here because it's faster. And I'm spending a lot of time here. And uh, so something like this. So let's. Uh, all right. So this. First of all, let's decrease the space in between the lines of text, and that is called letting. So that is right here. Okay, so we can click on the arrows to decrease the amount of space. Then we'll work with tracking for holistic. Okay, so we're going to highlight that, and then click on the drop down menu. You can go to 200, all right, and that's not enough, so you can actually type it in. So I'll type in, I'll try 250. And why? Oh, oh, there must be a space over here. That's why. Yeah, because that's. Here we go. Okay. So we want to open this up a little bit more. So I will uh, simply click on this upper arrow key and just hold my cursor down until it gets more lines up left and right. So that's good about there. So, okay. So, I mean, you could also do something like this. What if. Um, Let's see. Let's go back down to 200. We could also simply scale up the size of the text. You know, that's another way of making it more important. All right, and and uh, let's see here. And uh, there we go, something like that. And then we can also make it green because holistic green makes sense, makes visual sense. So let's do that. All right, so we get we have something that looks like that. So I'm not telling you to do this, though. I just am showing you how to accomplish certain things that will help you in your design. You obviously do not have any design background, like other people in the class. All right, so just take that into consideration. But now you have some tools to work with. Okay, you may want to take this text and 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 scale it up more. You know, um, so it fits nicely around the house. You may not want to include the cross. It's up to you. Okay. Um, so I hope that helped. All right. Take care. Bye.